In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi to all parish family members. This is your priest, Father Paul Narisetti. As we are in the Holy Week, I would like to reflect with you on Holy Thursday's readings and liturgy. The readings given for us for this Holy Thursday are First reading is from Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 to 8 and 11 to 14. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 116. Second reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26. And the Gospel reading is from St. John's Gospel chapter 13 verses 1 to 15. The first reading explains to us the Passover of the Lord. Each house has to take a lamb without blemish on the 10th day of the first month and keep it to the 14th day of the first month and slaughter it at twilight. This day will be a day of remembrance. Thus, the Passover feast of the Israelites, what we read in Exodus chapter 12, verses 26 to 37, commanded by the Lord God and celebrated yearly by all Israelites to thank God for his miraculous liberation of their ancestors from Egyptian slavery, their exodus from Egypt, and their final arrival in the Promised Land. The second reading, Paul suggests that the celebration of the Lord's Supper from the very beginning of the church was an unbroken tradition by all the faithful, reminded themselves of the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel reading describes how Jesus transformed the Passover into the Eucharistic celebration. Jesus gave his apostles his own body and blood under the appearances of bread and wine as spiritual food and drink, in addition to serving the roasted Paschal lamb. Coming to the Gospel reading, first remember at every single Mass, we hear these words. On the night he was betrayed, that night was Holy Thursday. And it is one of the most important nights. What happened on this original Holy Thursday night? Holy Thursday was one of the most crucial days in the life of Jesus Christ. Let us look at some of the things the Gospels record. Jesus sent Peter and John to arrange for them to use the upper room to hold the Passover meal. Jesus washed the apostles' feet. Jesus held the first Mass. Jesus instituted the priesthood. Jesus announced that Judas would betray him. Jesus gave the new commandment to love one another. Jesus indicated that Peter had a special role among the apostles. Jesus announced that Peter would deny him. Jesus prayed for the unity of his followers. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed in the Gethsemane. Jesus told that Judas would betray him. Stop the disciples from continuing a violent resistance. Jesus healed the ear of Malchus the high priest's servant. Jesus was taken before the high priest Annas and Cephas. Jesus was denied by Peter. Jesus was taken to Pilate. Holy Thursday was a decisive day. Sometimes this Holy Thursday is also called Maundy Thursday. In fact, Maundy is derived from the Latin word mandatum or mandate. This word is used in Latin text for John's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 34. In English, we read, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Holy Thursday, thus sometimes called Maundy Thursday because it was on this day that Jesus gave us the new commandment, the new mandate to love one another as he loves us. On this day, liturgically, several things happen. The bishop celebrates a chrism mass with his priest. The chrism mass, which the bishop concelebrates, 
with his presbyterium and at which the holy chrism is consecrated and the oils blessed manifest the communion of the priests with their bishop in the same priesthood and ministry of Christ the mass of the last supper is held in the evening the mysteries which are commemorated in this mass are the institution of the eucharist the institution of the priesthood and Christ's commandment to love one another as he loved us at the mass of the last supper priest performs the washing of feet the washing of the feet is performed on this day represents the service and charity of Christ who came not to be served but to serve we see a this in Matthew's gospel chapter 20 verse 28 and also in Mark's gospel chapter 10 verse 45 the tabernacle is empty and the eucharist is put in a place of repose the altar is stripped the faithful are invited to spend time in eucharistic adoration while the sacrament is in repose this year as we all cannot come to church to participate what can we do in our homes make our homes a domestic church if possible the elder of the house washes the feet to show that you are at their service we too cover all the crosses statues with a veil that are there in our homes do not light the candles or lamps before the images of saints do the eucharistic adoration read the gospel of uh, st john chapters 13 to 17 meditatively during your adoration please pray for the love of the eucharist to be increased in all the faithful for this is the anniversary of the first holy mass pray for your priest for this is the anniversary of the institution of the ministerial priesthood in order to perpetuate the holy mass and other sacraments keep in mind the love of the neighbor for this is the new commandment that jesus christ had given to all of us and pray for the love of our neighbor the love of neighbor needs to be extended to our brother sun sister moon brother wind and air sister water brother fire mother earth and we see when we don't have the love of this we will be in trouble so love our nature praise and bless the lord and give thanks and serve him with great humility amen the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you and your family the father and the son and the holy spirit amen